I have two oils here. One is ice cold, the other is heated up. Just by looking at them, which do you think is which? We know that heat makes oil thinner, which should mean deeper penetration into wood, right? Today we're going to explore this mystery and see if temperatures make a difference. For centuries, woodworkers and luthers have experimented with oil finishes. From furniture makers to violin masters, warming oils before application seem to make sense. Thinner liquids flow better, so they should soak in deeper. Old varnish recipes even mention warming finishes before application. This varnish becomes golden by exposure to the sun. To use it, warm it in the sun and lay it on with the hand. But was this just about workability or did it actually change how the finish bonded with the wood? The legendary Stradivarius violins have fascinated experts for centuries. Their varnish is one of the most studied finishes in history. Could heated oils have been the missing link to their incredible sound? Modern finishing experts challenge this idea. Bob Flexner argues that heating oil actually seals the wood faster, preventing deeper penetration. The warmer the finish, the faster it cures. The faster the finish cures, the quicker the pores are capped off, which prevents further penetration. So who's right? Did old masters discover something modern woodworkers have forgotten? Or is this just another woodworking myth? Let's find out. So how do you actually test something like this? I need to create a setup that's simple, repeatable, and focused on just one variable, temperature. I purchased a gallon of Dutch oil for this experiment. Originally, I considered using multiple oils, but to keep this test clean and simple, I decided to focus on just one. If you're interested in seeing this done with different finishes, let me know in the comments. The safest way to heat oil is with a water bath. So I picked up a coffee mug warmer for this experiment. Obviously, heating this entire gallon wouldn't make sense, so I reached out to Stop Loss Bags to see if they donate a bag for this test, and they were happy to be a part of this. If you've never used these before, Stop Loss Bags are the best way I've found to preserve finishing oils and paints. I have a full review on them if you want to check it out, but for this experiment, they're not just for storage, they allow me to heat small, controlled amounts of oil safely. I plane all my stock of thickness before heading to the table saw and cutting each sample piece to two inches by two inches. They're just a little bit over five eighths inches thick. For this experiment, I'm testing cherry oak and curly maple, each chosen for a specific reason. Oak is an open grain wood, so if heated oil penetrates better, it should be the most obvious here. Just to give you an idea of how open the grain is with red oak, with a two inch block like this, I can actually blow through the end grain and blow out a candle. Curly maple is dense, which means penetration is naturally more limited. But I'm also curious, will warming the oil change how it looks visually? And cherry, it's a neutral, medium density wood, which makes it a great baseline for comparison. As you can see, I use the same board for all three samples because even wood from the same tree can soak up oil in different ways. To keep things consistent, I'm sealing the end grain with glue. Since wood wicks like a straw, end grain pulls in way more oil and it usually ends up darker than the rest of the piece. That's why you typically seal it during finishing anyway. But for this test, we're focusing on how oil behaves on the surface grain. With these three woods, we should get a clear picture of what's actually happening when we warm oil before application. With the glue dried, I'm marking the glued end grain so I can keep track of each sample. I've also got a scale here that measures down to a centigram. That's one hundredth of a gram, so I'll record the base weights before we begin and get the water going. Now, after spending more time than I'd like to admit playing with this coffee mug warmer, I realize it's just not going to cut it. If I take the temperature on this, it's 85 degrees and I've got it set to 158 degrees and it's been here for a while. So instead I'm switching over to a heating pad I've used in the past for steam bending. The nice thing about the mug warmer was that I could digitally set it to exactly 130 degrees. That was my target temperature, but I've got a thermometer so I can still dial it in manually. So we're good. With the samples now carefully weighed and don't ask me how I was able to hit exactly 30 grams with this one and the water at 130 degrees we're ready. So let's get into the test. Will heated oil actually penetrate deeper or will it seal off the surface faster like some experts claim? There's only one way to find out. My water bath is sitting at 130 degrees, which has brought both the oil and the test container up to the same temperature. Oil, of course, causes things to float. So during the warming period, I built a plunge device out of acrylic and nails to hold the test pieces under the surface. I used a drill press to make a grid of holes, slid in the nails, and added a dab of hot glue on top to hold it all together. Bonus, it helps trap the heat inside while we dunk each block for exactly 10 minutes. 
I'll be using fresh oil for each round, both warm and cold, to avoid any cross-contamination. For the first test piece, oak, I realized I didn't have quite enough oil, so I topped it off before lowering the plunger. 10 minutes later, I removed the piece, wiped off the excess oil, and stood it upright on the glued edge to cure. Then I dumped the used oil and replaced it with fresh hot oil for the next block, maple. Interestingly, this was the only warm sample where I noticed bubbles collecting at the top. After wiping it down, it was time for cherry. A close-up here shows that the cherry didn't produce any visible bubbles. With the warm samples complete, we move on to the room temperature oil, which is just over 60 degrees. Right away, the difference was obvious. The oil was much thicker. I added the oak sample and set the plunger in place. 10 minutes later, I pulled it out. I'll admit, it was much easier to clean the blocks after the hot oil bath. The cool oil really sticks to the surface. After a fresh pour, maple was next. That's done, so we'll dump the oil one last time and test the final block, cherry. All samples are now wiped down and resting. About two hours in, I gave them a final wipe to remove any oil that might have wept out before letting them sit for the full 10 to 12 hours. Now that the oil has had time to soak in, it's time to see what's actually happened. First, I'll weigh each piece to see if the heated oil absorbed more than the room temperature oil. My first one, hot oak, was 26.59. I'll add it now, and I'm at 26.71. My cold oak was at 26.61, and I am at 26.76. Hot maple, I was at 29.28, and I'm at 29.42. Cold maple, 29.8, and I'm exactly 30. Hot cherry, I am at 30 on here, 30.11. And cold cherry, I was at 30.31, and now I'm at 30.47. Now I've crunched the numbers, and interestingly enough, there is more weight gained with the cold than with the hot on every single one of these. And if you remember earlier, I talked about it being hard to wipe off the oil with the cold than with the hot. So it makes me think that the cold actually clung on a lot more than the hot. The hot was more easily able to be pulled off. But this is very interesting. But weight alone doesn't tell the full story. We also need to look at how deep the oil actually went. Does heat change how a finish looks? With our first sample here, I've got cherry, and honestly, I cannot see a difference between the two. There's a slight chatoyance that you probably can't see on camera, but on both of them, they'd look the same. So of these two, this would be my hot oil, and this would be the cold oil. And again, I cannot see a difference. My second example here is curly maple. And honestly, this one actually shines a lot more. The chatoyance in this one really comes alive, where it seems a little bit more dull on this side. Again, I'm not sure if you can see this, but I do see that this side is slightly more vibrant. If I flip this over, it still looks a lot stronger on this side. Maybe not on this side, but on this side, it really comes alive. This one is my hot maple. My final one is oak. I don't see a difference between the two, but with this one, I see that there are some inconsistencies. It looks like the oil penetrated a little bit deeper in some places than in other places. It's just slight, it's not that big of a deal. But this one would be my cold, and this would be the hot. So maybe because it's warmer, it's actually spreading out a little bit more evenly, but that's what I see with these. I'll be cutting into each one to check penetration depth, and I might even break out the microscope to get a closer look. If heated oil really soaks in deeper, we should see a clear difference. But if Bob Flexner was right, the surface should be sealed with little to no penetration. Let's take a closer look. Before we flip these over and check what's inside, let's check the outside to see if maybe the oil just pooled up on the outside more on the cold than on the hot. So I'm gonna measure each one of these. That says 41 64ths. 41 64ths. 41 64ths. 41 64ths. 41 64ths. And finally, 41 64ths. So you can see at surface level, they're all exactly the same. 
We're under the microscope now and I'll be comparing each species side by side. For each set, the cold oil test piece will be on top and the heated sample below. First up, curly maple, and just look at that. There's a dramatic difference between letting cold oil soak in on its own. Penetration on this piece is nearly double what we saw with the hot oil. Moving on to the yolk sample, this one's a little more spotty along the edge. But in the larger section of each, the cold oil once again comes out ahead. And last, cherry. I saved this one for a reason, look at that contrast. While the hot oil is barely present, almost non-existent, the cold oil penetrated four to five times deeper. Fascinating. This confirms something important, at least with modern finishes, like Danish oil that includes added dryers. There's no shortcut to deeper penetration. Heating the oil might change the viscosity, but it doesn't change the chemistry. I've seen it before in forums, people swearing that heating up a finish will dramatically improve the results. But beyond the safety concerns, this test supports what Bob Flexner pointed out years ago, that heating or even vigorously rubbing in a finish can actually close off absorption. It's a good reminder for me, especially when I'm turning a piece and tempt to rush the finish. Letting the oil do its job just might be the best way to get the results that I want. So now I'm left with a new question. What if we cool the oil even further? Could it flow deeper? Maybe that's a test for another day. Thank you so much for being a part of this experiment. Now, what are your thoughts? Did you see a difference that I may have missed? Is this something that you try in your shop or do you think it's just another woodworking myth? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. A huge thank you to my patrons for making experiments like this possible. If you'd like to be a part of the team and support more content like this, check out the link in the description. Thanks again, friends, and remember to keep making things.